Like any good book, movie or computer game, a sequel is never far behind and always promises to be bigger and better than the one before. So our reporter Richard Stringer went back to the church of St. Peter and St. Paul to see how St. Games Day 2 measures up to their first retro gaming event. After the success of the first St. Games Day, a second event for half term was welcomed. But as with all sequels, it needed to be bigger and bolder to bring in the crowds. So this time there were more craft stalls and a few other surprises as well. This is the first time that I've taken my craft to any sort of event or um, store or anything like that. Um, but I sell um, PDFs for patterns for cross stitch. The majority of my shop is like fan made, so like fan art um, stitches. I did some small ones when I was younger, I can't remember finishing any. And then I taught myself using YouTube and then I I took on some bigger projects and now I'm here I am now where I can design my own projects. Sketch them out and then um, I digi digitally uh, design them and then I make um, the PDF file and go for it. I make geek craft. The first stuff I started to make was the cards, uh, Star Wars cards to start off with. Chewbacca was the very first one I designed and it was for a birthday card. I have a lot of friends with small boys and um, so I needed birthday cards for them. So I started off making Star Wars cards and it's just gone from there really. If a character has either a really good hairstyle or clothes that really make them unique, I can make them into a card. I'm a big well. Harry Potter fan as you can see from the scarf, yes. Um, last year when I Obviously, new books and things came out. I decided to have a go with Harry Potter, so I made some cards and then decided to do some bookmarks and scarves and jumpers and things like that as well. Always knitted. My mum taught me when I was quite small, um, and so knitting for me was quite a natural thing. And when I started making Harry Potter stuff, to me the obvious thing would be to do the scarves, and also I designed the bookmarks from the scarves. And um, so, yeah, it's something we've always done, so it's quite natural to start knitting geek stuff as well. All of this is my mum's stuff, which she's always been tinkering with, um, like, she's really into fairies and stuff like that, and um, she just kind of has, like, all these new ideas that pops in, and then, like, you walk in and you find her, like, just sitting in her craft room making socks or, like, the, making um, the clay models and stuff like that, they even glow in the dark. <laughs> you know, it's actually um, because um, my granddad collects loads of jars and then I think she was looking on Pinterest and then she thought, this is a great idea, so now we're not allowed to throw away jars, they are used for everything else. I really do like the dragons, especially the ones over there. It kind of reminds me of like Spyro, which was like my favourite game growing up. And also like, I'm also into all the whole fantasy side of things, like that's something I enjoy. We're here to raise money for Access, which is our autism support group for carers, and to raise money for the church and project. We've got a soft toy tombola and a raffle of a pompy bear. They're all donated. Um, I've got links with several uh, charity shops in Waterlooville who phone me when they've got a, a bag of toys. They go in the wash and then they get packed up for the next tombola. <laughs> Very close to me, yes. I'm I'm mum of a, a, a young man, an autistic young man, um, and we have a support group going on called Access, um, which stands for Autism Carers Campaign for Effective Solutions and Support. So we're trying to sort of effect some change and get a service, dedicated service for autistic adults, because as soon as they reach 18 and the child service throws them out, there's nowhere for them to go. Today I'm running pixel art workshops, which are workshops um, made using hammer beads. I never limit people, but we are at a retro gaming event, so lots of different gaming characters. I've got a few cards that I've made, which are just from my bigger pixel art designs, but just small versions. My necklace, this is actually the uh, first ever pixel art I made as an adult and I wore it to the One-Eyed Dog pub about five years ago so this is the one that started it all for me. We've got a little girl that's a big fan of Hello Kitty. It's Father's Day coming up so there's been a couple of guitars have been made for dads. Um, the Hello Kitties are being made for a granddad so I'm not sure if that's his favourite or the girl's favourite but yeah Father's Day is on the mind for lots of people today. New to the event was cosplay, a chance for people to dress up as some of their favourite gaming characters. Uh, cosplay is uh, portraying your favourite fictional characters from the comics, anime, 
TV episodes, films, whatever you can find that's classed as fictional. Even a book you can do cosplay as. I'd say cosplay is um, a place where you can just kind of dress up as whoever you want, whoever you want to be. Cosplay is costume play, so it's just acting in role. It's, yeah, just being part of a costume base, really. You get a lot of followers, a lot of people subscribe. Um, people, people enjoy the support knowing that they're not the only ones who are doing it. It's very much a group activity. Everyone likes the community. No, there are no rules. <laughs> <laughs> this is Richard Stringer for That's TV.